Hey, welcome back. Time for five more DM quick tips. Now, these are tips that I have learned running and playing games over the last 40 years. Um, this is the second video of the ongoing series of tips. I will link the full playlist down in the description. Um, now, just bear in mind, while my tips are geared towards advanced Dungeons and Dragons, many of them should be useful no matter which version you play. All right, let's get to it. Tip number one. Figure out any and all house rules before the game starts. Now, preferably, this would be back in session zero, where you first ro rolled up your characters and maybe did a quick combat to try them out. Now, you should get all your house rules established, but if you miss a few or want to add some more later, introduce it and discuss it before the game. And ideally, you'll have a, a house rule that I'm going to recommend that any new house rule needs to be approved by probably all of the regular players and DM. Now, obviously, you could have extra players drop in. They're not going to have much say in your house rules. But all the regular players and DM should have total buy-in on a new house rule that's introduced after the game, after the campaign starts, after session zero. That way there can be no heartache or anything else later. As if you force even one person who's against a new rule, and if you force it on them, they're going to resent that. Even if they start to like it later, they're still going to kind of resent that treatment. So... Whatever works for your group, though, I recommend you implement a house rule of how to adopt more house rules. Tip number two. Rule zero of Dungeons & Dragons, everyone knows it. It's that the DM's rules final. It's in the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Master Guide. Now, it's a fine. Someone needs to be final arbitrator. But personally, though, I'm going to append to that. And that, that the ruling may be final right there and then. But the DM still can make a mistake, and so players and DM, if the ruling, if the players just think that the ruling is wrong, uh, don't, you know, don't argue during the game, don't be the rules lawyer, but, and wait until after the game, or preferably even a period of time later when everyone's cooled down and calmed down, and just uh, have an honest conversation about it. Don't feel rushed during the heat of the moment. You know, you're not waiting for people to come back from the bathroom or grabbing snacks and trying to have a big conversation about it. Just hold your tongue, wait, and have the conversation later. I mean, it's a game, and if everyone agrees, the rules can be changed. You know, you know it could be a maybe you're coming up with a new house rule that for that particular situation that you just need a different house rule or a different ruling, and maybe it's situational. And maybe it was a one-time thing and I'll never come back, but... Don't let that kind of thing fester. I've seen it time and time again on forums, people asking, how should I deal with this situation? And time and time again, the answer is always, talk to the person who is causing you to have this grief and see if you guys can, you know, reconcile, because at the end of the day, it is a game. I have a question, though. Have you ever had an experience where you've had to discuss a ruling, either as a player or a DM? How did that go for you? What was the outcome? You know, what, what did happen? I'd love to see your answers down in the comments down below. But uh, tip number three, just to continue with that second tip, my third tip is to, it's just a reminder that Dungeons & Dragons is a game. It's a relaxation. Of course, there's competitions and feelings of accomplishment when everything works well. Your character levels up, you defeat the dragon, you all of those things. You know, but at the end of the day, don't forget, you're probably playing this game with your friends or people that you enjoy being around, and you don't want to alienate them and so forth by forcing it, you know, your hand with the kind of the couple of points that I've made so far. Just, you know, just keep it in mind that it is a game and you're playing a game with people who, you know, they could choose to be doing something else somewhere else. So be be appreciative that they're there spending their time with you doing something that you mutually enjoy. Uh, tip number four. Something, and this is something I just learned. I just learned this. Everybody can learn new things. I just learned this. And I'm sure everybody else already knew it, okay? This isn't like a new thing for everybody else. You probably already knew this. But just in case you were slow on the uptake like me, did you know that you can fix your plastic minis with hot water? 
Um, I didn't realize this. If you have a mini with a bent sword or something and you want to get that mini straightened out, that sword straightened out, or that leg straightened out, or the head's tilted clockwise, then just heat up some water. it got to be good and hot. Um, too hot to stick your finger in, so like use a strainer or like one of those noodle spoons or something with the slots in it. Uh, quickly dip the mini in the water with that spoon or strainer and then use it and, you know, bring that right back up. So don't bring your fingers and don't let the mini in there so long that it would like melt. You just want to get it warm and soft so you can kind of bend it a little bit. So dip it in, pull it back out. If it's not long enough, dip it in for half a second longer, pull it back out. And then you can fix whatever. And there's a downside though. I'm going to warn you about the downside. If you do this, you're going to end up fixing a bunch of minis that were in kind of your junk pile, and now you're going to want to paint them. Now you're going to be moving them to the to-be-painted pile. So while the junk pile is going to get smaller, the to-be-painted pile is going to get bigger, and someday you're going to have to paint those things, right? <laughs> All right, tip number five. Even if you're playing on a virtual tabletop like Roll20, and I've been playing a lot of Roll20, uh, that's pretty much all, all I've been playing lately is, you know, uh, is on Roll20 virtual tabletop. You can still use player handouts, though. I mean, that was one of the biggest things I had to kind of figure out was how to, how can I pass a player a note? You, know, you might hand them a sticky note or note card or a torn off scrap of paper with a note jotted on it real quick. Facebook Messenger works great for that. Just everybody's on Facebook. Just send a message directly just to that person, not to your whole group accidentally, or to some other group, which I've done all of those things. So just pay attention to what you're sending them to. And then something like Dropbox. Uh, you can get plenty of free space for something like this on Dropbox. Give them handouts of your documents or some pictures. And the nice thing about that is if you want them to keep that handout from session to session, you can just leave it in the Dropbox. It's shared to them. They can go ahead and grab that, look at it. Obviously, don't share anything too secret because there's no, like, username, password. It's just a long string of letters and numbers that would be kind of hard to guess, but I'm sure it's not possible. Yeah, whatever they want to look at, they can go and pop it out, look at it. You can create physical objects and then take some nice pictures of them and then put those in the, into the Dropbox. You know, I know it's not quite as good as being there, but still, it lets you do puzzles, pass notes, other fun things. You know, everybody gets a handout. If they wanted to, they could, like, print them out and be sitting there trying to put them together while you're talking about it. So it can be kind of a fun little interactive activity that otherwise you'd be missing on a virtual tabletop. But So, yeah, thanks for taking a look. What quick tips would you add to my list? Please let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.